Hi everybody, I felt that it would be helpful for a lot of people to, you know, learn about basic eyeshadow techniques. I've learned a lot over the years of watching YouTube videos, um, and I noticed that there's a bit of a learning curve with a lot of people because there's a lot of us who know a lot of techniques, we've been experimenting with so many different things, and there's also some of us who are just learning about putting makeup on our faces, buying products that people have recommended, but not being able to know how to use them and I want to be able to kind of navigate help with doing that today so let's just get into it the first thing I want to talk about is tools I feel like a lot of YouTube tutorials nowadays they just kind of like go ahead with it and not really explain what they're using why they're using it so I'm just gonna do that first before we actually get into the look if you already feel like you're equipped with the proper tools you can just skip to the next part where I actually start but for those of us who are a little bit unsure with what we're working with I'm just gonna lay everything out here first see your face and see the details for example if I use a mirror behind me I would not be comfortable with doing my makeup because this is a mirror for looking at your full body what you're gonna want is a mirror with a little bit of magnification but nothing too crazy this side has like a three times magnification and I think that's way too close but the regular side has a 1.5 magnification and I don't know how to show this but I'm gonna try see my desk is so clean but you want to be able to see your face and see some of the details on your face as well just so you can see what you're doing with your makeup and how you're applying it and how much you're applying and how much pressure you're doing this I got by the way if you were wondering at winners it was like 12 bucks something like that you could probably get it for like eight depending on what they have on sale I'm pretty sure they have these on sale a lot the second tool that I want to talk about is the color switch. You don't have to get the Sephora one, but this is just the one that I have. And what this is essentially, you could honestly make this at home or just kind of like use something at home. This is sort of like one of those scrubber sponges that you would use for dishes. And it's in a little tin can. And what I love about this is that essentially it saves you money even though you're using money to spend on this. But you are saving yourself with cleaning your brushes so you're saving how much um brush cleaner you're using you're saving yourself time on those cleaning you're saving yourself on tissue paper or paper towels that you may be using you're saving yourself on brushes that you don't have to buy just because you want to be able to use the same brush multiple times so I would really suggest investing in a color switch just because if you want to be working with so many different colors, this is going to be your thing. Next, the brushes. The ones that I picked out are ones that I gravitate towards and feel that they have the most, I get the most use out of these ones. So this one to start is the Morphe M535. It's a general blending brush. It's very fluffy. This I've had this for so such a long time. So. Uh, it's probably not gonna look like this when you first get it um, the next one is the Morphe M507 which is a precision blending brush as you can see it's so much smaller it's a little bit more denser um, and then the next one is the Morphe M514 this one is like the bigger sister of this one this one is a bigger but still smaller than this type of blending brush it has I don't know it's just the way of the shape has been so helpful with my looks lately I've been using this so much I literally bought two of these just because of how much I love this one and then another one well this one came in a kit so I don't really have like a little number for it but it's just a smudger brush it's dense it's dome shaped and it's flat so you're gonna be wanting something like this I feel like four brushes in general are still kind of a lot for somebody that's just starting out especially if we're only going to be using a couple eyeshadows so realistically you can take you can do just these three or you can even do just these two because these two from starting my makeup journey these two were the only things that I've been using especially when I only did like one to three eyeshadow colors and yeah I picked two eyeshadow palettes that I felt were 
considered the ultimate everyday basic eyeshadow palettes and I picked the Lorac Pro Palette and the Soft Clam. You don't have to use these ones, but I'm just saying that these are the ones that I use and I feel like a lot of people have some similar colors to it. The Lorac Pro Palette, first of all, is the more on the cooler side. Um, what I really love about it is the white that they have on this one. It's so beautiful and Honestly, I haven't even touched any of these ones, but I have used, these are the most basic colors you could probably have, and these are your common shimmers that you've seen on a lot of palettes recently. And then the next one is Soft Glam palette, which is on the warmer side. Um, I've been using this quite frequently. I've hit pan on a couple of these as well. Um, the only thing I feel is missing in this one is the white that the Lorac Pro Palette has. And I've been using pretty much these ones right here. And sometimes the black and sometimes the shimmers. But most of these, you don't even need like these four right here. You just need from here all the way down. So if you have something similar to this as well, use that while following along. I will be using this on one eye and this one on the other. So before we get into the video, I would like to establish a base because I, and by this I mean putting down a base before you put down your eyeshadow because if you don't put down a base and you just put your eyeshadow directly on your eyelid without prepping it or anything, you're gonna have no color payoff. The colors on the palette are not gonna look the same when you put it on your eyes. And you didn't buy that palette just because you like the colors on the palette and you wanted just to look at the palette. You wanted those colors on your eyelids and you wanted to see how well they would look. So if you put down a base, that palette, no matter what the price is, is going to look really good on your eyes and the payoff of those colors are gonna perform really well. With bases, you have options. You can either do concealer on your eyelid, which what I've done. Um, you can choose to leave it as it is, or you can set it with translucent powder. I set it with translucent powder, but because I've, I've been filming this for such a long time, it's already creasing and like coming off. Or you can put down an eyeshadow primer. You don't have to necessarily set an eyeshadow primer because they should be drying down on their own. I like using the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow primer because this one isn't as wet, but it's also not too drying. Um, and a little goes a long way. Like this is such a pigmented eyeshadow primer. It literally covers the whole lid. So in the future when we're working with colors on the rainbow, this is gonna help us Make sure that the colors on the rainbow look like the colors on the rainbow and not something that's kind of mixed with the skin tone color, you know what I mean? But because we are working with browns and taupey colors, I'm just sticking today with concealer and translucent powder. But it's up to you with what you want to do. So to give you an idea of what eyeshadow is going to look like when you have a different base, I'm going to do, I put concealer here and I set it with translucent powder. I put eyeshadow primer and didn't set it at all. And I'm just gonna have this little space here for no eyeshadow primer, no nothing. Excuse my eczema, it's been a journey here. And the color I'm going to be using is this dark brown color called Cypress Umber. Yep, yeah. Cypress Umber, just so you can see the color payoff. And I'm gonna dip into it twice, like that. Tap off the excess. And this is what it's gonna look like on concealer. I'm gonna do the same thing, tap off the excess. This is what it's gonna look like on primer. And this is what it's gonna look like <laughs> on my hand. So as you can see, there's going to be more color payoff with the eyeshadow primer, a little bit of color payoff with the concealer, which we can build, but I prefer this for an everyday type of look. I feel like the browns, especially dark browns, are a little bit harder to work with when you want to have sort of a soft everyday look but have a darker brown, and like this one you can barely see it at all. 
So again, establishing a base is important. So normally when I'm doing my base, my mirror is just kind of upright. But as soon as I get to my eyeshadow, I like to tilt it up and lean forward just so I can see better. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want, what you feel comfortable with. So not a lot of us will feel super comfortable with eyeshadows and working with them. So I'm going to acknowledge the spectrum of comfortability. Um, so this is going to be the video where it's super in-depth with the thought process of putting on eyeshadows. Going to be thinking about how I'm holding my brush, how much pressure I'm putting, where I'm holding it on the brush, where I'm putting the shadows, why I'm putting it there so many different things that kind of just seem taken for granted when we see makeup tutorials because you watch them and you're like why did you put it there like how did that even get there so i'm gonna try to go through it as much as i can without this video getting too long I'm starting to lose my voice with how many times i'm talking when we're talking about holding a makeup brush we're gonna compare it to holding a pen this is how I hold a pen. People say to hold the eyeshadow brush like you're holding a pen and I say no because this is how I'm holding it. Not everybody's going to be holding it the same. Also I'm right handed so it's going to look a lot different for a lot of people who write with their left hands or even I write it with this. But as you can see I'm super close to where the ink would dispense on a pen and then that means I'm putting a lot of pressure on the paper and my hands gonna cramp really easily and it does so when we're holding a makeup brush for or an eyeshadow brush specifically we want to hold it two-thirds of the way from here and we don't want to hold it like a pen I feel comfortable with the pe the pe the pen the brush in the middle of my index finger and my middle finger or my index finger is a little bit higher over it and then my thumb is going to be anchoring because here I can easily blend and when you're blending because you're a little bit further you're you're not going to be blending too hard but you also want to make the conscious note that you shouldn't be blending like this you should be blending like this so that the color gets on your skin rather than just staying on the brush and getting like in places that you kind of don't want them to be with that being said let's finally get into the eyeshadow tutorial to quickly recap i'm going to be doing soft glam on my right eye lorac pro palette on my left eye and i'm only going to be using two um brushes which is the flat dense dome brush for smudging and the morphe m535 just these two today and we're going to be using we can try three colors today um, we're going to be using one that's lighter um, a medium toned color and a darker color i'm sorry it took us this long to get here but there's a lot to talk about and when we're doing, or when I'm doing an everyday look that involves two to three shades of a neutral or warm tone sort of eyeshadow look, I like to start with the crease. And this is going to be different for a lot of us because I'm not going to be the same skin tone as you. I'm not going to have the same eye shape as you. So I'm going to try to explain as much as my thought process is so you can have an idea of how it can apply to you. Right? So when we're doing a crease, you want to take a look back in the mirror and see where your eyeball forms. Where your eyeball shape is, that's considered your crease. So this is my crease right here, right? But as you can see, it kind of ends a little bit higher from where the fold of my eyelid is. I have hooded eyelids, so if I try to put something right here, it's just going to disappear in the fold. You won't be able to see it. Naturally, with hooded eyelids, you want to put it a little bit higher just so you can see that color, or as high as you want, up to you. <laughs> with monolids and almond eye shapes, they got no problems. You can just put it on the crease. It'll be fine. You're going to see it. Just to give you an idea of the shade type that I pick, I like to pick a shade that's a little bit darker than my skin tone, sort of similar to what I use to contour. And on this palette, for me, that would be burnt orange. As you can see, I've used it a lot. 
So I'm gonna swirl that in there to make sure the product gets on my brush. And then we're gonna tap off the excess. If you've seen this a lot, the reason is because you wanna make sure the application of the shadow is even and not patchy. If you don't tap it off, you're gonna get when you first initially put the eyeshadow on your eyelid, there's gonna be way too much eyeshadow on the one spot that you touch. You wanna make sure everything is even. And so again, holding it like this, making sure I have a loose grip and I'm not putting too much pressure in my head, knowing that I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna put this in my crease and you kinda of want to do a windshield wiper motion and this is how I started doing it. And I just wanted to quickly mention to anchor your hand under your chin just so your hand doesn't shake too much. And what a lot of people have been doing and what I like to do as well, blending that crease into where my nose starts so it kind of looks more natural. And as you can see, there's already a little bit of depth to this eye because I put it in the crease. Um, if that's not to your liking, and personally, I like to put on a little bit more just because, obviously, as you saw earlier, the concealer's not going to have more color payoff than an eyeshadow primer. So I'm just going to put one more layer. Done. And when you're doing your eyeshadow as well, Depending on your eye shape, you can bring it out a little bit, but you don't have to bring it too far. The furthest I go is where my brow ends. You can blow it out as much as you want, but this for me and I, everyday eyeshadow look, I just kind of like to do it where my brow ends. Oh, right there. And now that I'm happy with the way that it looks with my crease, I'm gonna brush that off. We're gonna start moving to shading in the outer V to give you an idea of what the outer V is gonna look like. If you hold your brush like this, from the tip of your nose to the end of your brow, that's where your V is gonna start at the very end. So it's gonna go here and towards your crease, but not all the way down. It's just gonna end in the middle from where your pupil starts. So you're gonna have an outer V here. And for the outer V, I like to go a little bit darker. Um, you can, I personally like to choose between Sienna and Rustic as my first color for the outer V. I'm gonna be choosing Rustic first. When you're following the outer V shape and you're applying the eyeshadow, what I like to do is start by mapping it out like this and then blending everything in in a circular motion but following that shape and this is kind of what you get but depending on your style you can bring this out a little bit more and create more of like a triangle shape and by doing that the same way you were mapping it out in the beginning you just gotta bring it out even further and then once I have the outer V done, I like to go back in with the crease color, tapping off the excess, and blending those two colors together again. So now that the crease in the outer corner is done, I like to go in um, to the inner corner with a skin tone color. You can use your finger with this or you can use the smudger brush, but if you're gonna use the smudger brush, you have to make sure you have the color switch. Here, I'm gonna use the brush. I'm gonna go into the palette and go pick up orange soda. And because this isn't a fluffy brush, when you're picking it up, you don't wanna be swirling it around. You kind of just wanna pack it on like that just so it gets evenly distributed on the brush and then tap off excess and apply it just sort of at the front portion of the lid where we didn't really touch this may not look like a difference to you but it's going to pay off once you finish the look if you want to put on eyeliner you can definitely put on eyeliner if you're more comfortable with that but Putting on a skin tone eyeshadow color or even a lighter one is going to bring everything together. And then, once we're done with the lid, I'm gonna move 
on to the bottom. So once your lid is done, we're gonna start with the bottom portion of the eye. And when you're putting on eyeshadow on the bottom portion, you remember how we started with our crease color and then went darker? I like to go backwards so that once you're blending everything in, it kind of looks seamless. So I'm gonna go back in with Rustic on this smudger brush. And again, we're just packing on the color. Um, this one I don't want too much because it's a dark color and I like to get close for this and I like to tilt my head down as well and I like to put it on the outer corner connecting the outer V and then bringing it in not all the way in but close enough and if that's not dark enough you can always layer it on which is what I'm going to do because I know I'm gonna be blending it and it's gonna disappear again but I want to make sure that initial color is what I get in the end when I blend it out now we're gonna take our fluffy brush because this is a big brush we don't want to necessarily use the whole thing on the bottom we want to make sure it's a little smaller that's why I suggested those smaller type of um, fluffy brushes but because we're only going to be using these two we don't really need to do that and when I'm using this I like to squeeze it so that it has a little bit of a fan shape and again keep in mind even though I am holding it at the tip we want to make sure to not put a lot of pressure so I'm going to lightly blend it out on the bottom this is pretty much the eyeshadow look that I would do every day. And if you really want to go a step further, if you have a highlighter type of color like a pink or a gold, I'm going to be using tempura. I want to say tempura, but it's tempura. Tempura. <laughs> and we're going to pack that on the smudger brush and place this on the inner corner just to lighten that area up. This is gonna look different for a lot of people too, depending on your type of style. You could literally just have a dot, but I like to spread it out more and even bring it down to the bottom. But that's just who I am. Now we're gonna do the other eye with the other palette. Now we're moving on to the Lorac Pro palette, which is a more cooler toned eyeshadow palette. And first, I'm going to clean off my brushes. You always want to make sure that before or after, you want to clean your brushes. I know that I'm not a saint. I don't do this all the time, but you've got to make sure to plant these seeds. So we're going to be moving on to the Lorac Pro palette. Um, and again, starting with the crease, we're going to want to choose a color that's a little bit similar to your skin tone, but just darker than that, almost similar to your contour. And as you can see, I've used the color taupe a lot. So that's what we're going to be dipping into. Tap off the excess. Look back, see where your crease is. Go ahead. Don't ask me what my hand is doing on the other side, I don't know. So this looks a little bit darker and 100% more cool toned. So once the crease is something that I like, I'm going to be doing the outer V again. And again, the outer V is the shape from where the tip of your nose meets the end of your brow. And it's going to be this little portion right here and towards your crease. And for that, I'm going to be going in with Sable, which is the next darker tone color on the palette itself. I don't want to put too much of this because this one is a lot darker than Rustic on the other palette. And again, mapping it out and then going into circular motions towards the inner corner. And this is a darker color, so we gotta 
be careful with it. And because I do want to bring it out a little bit, I'm going to fan it out and blend it out more. And now I'm going to go back into taupe, but before I do that, clean off my brush. Going into taupe, tabbing off the excess, and blending it. That's all blended, kind of. <laughs> We're gonna move on to the inner part of the lid. For this one, I'm gonna use my fingers and I'm just gonna dip my ring finger into the color cream. The reason why I'm using my ring finger is because my your ring finger is the weakest finger of all your fingers. So you're not gonna be able to put too much pressure on this finger and you're not gonna be pulling on your eyelid when you apply it as well. So I'm just gonna dot that on and pack it on too. Wow, my finger is so cold. And as you can see, it's already starting to bring everything together. And when you're doing the middle portion of your lid, you have no boundaries. You can literally go into your crease little bit or even into your outer V a little bit as well and it kind of brings everything in but if you feel you went a little too far just take your fluffy brush and blend it out look solved and now we're gonna be moving on to the bottom part again working backwards so we're gonna take the darker color going too far and then now taking the fluffy brush going into your crease color tapping off the excess pinching it a little bit and then blending it out and making sure that you're not applying too much pressure so for the inner corner I'm going to be using light bronze and not putting too much Tapping off the excess, putting it in the inner corner. And again, I personally like to go up, totally up to you. And now that you're done, your eyeshadow, you can go ahead, curl your lashes, apply eyeliner, and apply mascara. Thanks for watching.